On today's episode of the Living in Southern Maryland podcast, I had a great conversation with Ken Held from the Slice House in downtown Leonardtown. We talked all about the Slice House, but we also talked about the growth of downtown Leonardtown and all the things that are coming to downtown Leonardtown in the near future. Make sure you take a listen to the whole episode to find out what's going on. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Rob Scout with Living in Southern Maryland. Today, I got a really special guest. I got Ken Held from the Slice House, one of the, I think, one of the most famous pizza places down here in Southern Maryland. Um, he's in Leonardtown, and he's got some big stuff going on. I got my, now we got some new storefronts and stuff like that. So I want to give him the chance to kind of you know introduce himself and introduce the Slice House to the audience. So Ken, thanks for coming on today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. We're uh, super excited about being on, and thank you for your kind words about the Slice House. Um, we uh, started in uh, Leonardtown in uh, the old Kevin's Corner Cafe about uh, four years ago. Um, it's been uh, unbelievable. We've been so well received by the community and uh, just super excited to uh, be a part of the community. And uh, we we opened up uh, four years ago to Lines Out the Door, and uh, I'm proud to say that it really hasn't waned. And uh, the big question is, is, is why do we have two locations in the same town and where are we going from here? And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, hopefully in about 30 days, I'll never have to explain that again as we're moving to one location because that is the toughest question. Um, when we opened uh, four years ago, we did uh, the first week, we did whole pies and slices. And uh, the we were so overwhelmed that literally we regrouped within the first 10 days and said, we can't do whole pies and we just did slices. Um, we uh, On a busy, busy Friday, we can do up, upwards of 900 slices in a day. So you can imagine what's that like. And the, uh, the, the original slice house is only 1,500 square feet and no room for expansion. So uh, as quickly as we could, we acquired a second location, which is the Slice House to Go uh, on Washington Street and started to do whole pies there uh, three years ago in July. So with the first place been open for Slice House to Go will be uh, celebrating its three-year anniversary here um, at the end of the month. Uh, and that was just because of demand. Um, I had the opportunity to purchase the building on Washington Street um, uh, 18 months ago, and we now have both sides. There was another restaurant on the right-hand side, and we are now expanding um, to that location, and we're going to close the original Slice House and move everything to Washington Street. It's really exciting. Um, we're only open four days a week right now. We're hoping to go to six days a week um, in the one location, and uh, really excited excited about the opportunity to grow. That's awesome. Like, and so that's right there on the main drag in downtown for people that don't know Washington streets, the main drag that goes down and slice house is going to be one of the first, it's going to be a few restaurants in, but one of the first restaurants you see when you get to actual downtown is going to be the slice house on the right there. Um, I think, I, I guess my question is, do you know why you were so successful? Do you have an idea of like, what made it so lines are out the door? I can remember when you guys first end up, first opened up, because I was hopeful. We talked about this before. I was hopeful for gluten-free pizza, but I totally respect why you don't have it right now because of kitchen space and stuff and, and flour flying everywhere. But I watched the first time you started posting on Facebook four years ago, and um, it was literally every day you'd be sold out of dough. And then you guys did bagels for a little bit too. I remember that. And it was the same deal. Right. You were selling out within within hours of you opening up, what makes it, is it just that there's not many pizza places around here besides the chains or is it that you do something different? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a combination of both. Um, uh, we are deli people. We literally had always had dreams of opening up, opening up a deli. Uh, and it was uh, my wife, who's my partner. My son is our other partner. And she said, you realize that other than Nicoletti's, which has done an outstanding job over in Lexington Park for, gosh, a number of years. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they've been there 30 years um, and uh, people love Nicoletti's. But, uh, you know, they're 15 miles away and they were the only other independent at the time in the area. So Megan said, uh, let's do pizza. I said, 
we don't know anything about pizza. <laughs> and, uh, and believe it or not, there's a lot, a lot of science that goes into the dough. We turn that over to our son. Um, and he spent a couple of months um, actually uh, with uh, uh, a guy that's called the, uh, the, the dough doctor um, experimenting. It's hydration. It's chemicals. I don't mean to say chemicals. It's uh, minerals. Yeah. Um, and and uh, temperature and uh, so many different things go into it. And he nailed the dough. Uh, we, uh, I grew up, uh, um, uh, in New York and always had polio mozzarella and we figured we were going to use polio mozzarella. Todd from Grande Cheese comes in, shows us his pizza. It's a small cheesery out of Wisconsin that only makes, um, uh, Italian cheeses. We absolutely loved it. So the polio went out the, the door in here at Grande. And then we had a sauce guy come in from California, uh, brought us some fresh ca uh, California sauces and we just started to put everything together and the combination of the of the great cheese we use super high quality cheese the uh the delicious sauce and the and the high quality ingredients and of course the dough it all came together and it uh it, it, it's crazy that um um personally i i give my son all the credit for the dough i think it's a really darn good slice of pizza that's what everyone says and it, you know i i didn't know what your answer is going to be of like why you thought the pizza was doing so well, but I can tell you it's because of what you just said. You have put so much work into just a pizza. You know, you didn't have any idea what you're doing. You said before with, with that, you knew it could be a good business, but going and doing, first of all, all that research to even do it, not just like jumping in and saying, Oh, we'll just give it a try doing all that research and asking for help and really being curious. It seems like it's created something that, you know, I, I, I talk to anyone, especially in that Leonardtown area, um, and they just can't stop saying good things about the slice houses, pizza and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, Nicoletti's too. Nicoletti's, I, I don't want to, you know, throw shade at them. They're a Southern Maryland, St. Mary's institution. They've been around for a long time and, but it's a totally different type of pizza. Like I feel like a lot of people say it's, it's, you can like Nicoletti's and the slice house and, and they're just two totally different types. Right. And, and, and it's funny because, you know, some people don't like new, not a lot of people, but some people don't like New York thin crust pizza. I happen to, you know, uh, absolutely love it. That's what uh, I grew up on. And, and so that's what really duplicated, but I guess I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about our weekly specials, which is really, I think what's, uh, what's put us on the map. And, uh, and to be quite honest with you, absolutely the most fun part of our business because our, you know we have our mainstays we have our cheese our pepperoni um our supreme our uh whatever but but the weekly specials have been just uh, so much fun um, engaging in the community. Um, obviously, haters out there that yeah. say, nah, you know, especially this week's uh, pineapple yeah. uh, Hawaiian pizza is the most controversial. And if you saw my post this morning, uh, we had uh, 280 something reactions and 30 yeah. something comments, both good and bad. And I was uh, joking around, go, look, if you don't like pineapple pizza, then do something else. But yeah. people do like pineapple pizza. Oh, people love but it. it but it's our specials that have absolutely, I think, um, uh, differentiated us, you know, from everyone else. And there has been some absolutely crazy pies, uh, including uh, one of the most popular, which was the deconstructed egg roll, which is basically the insides of an egg roll on top of a pizza, which and if you look at it, one of the most exciting things in the world for me is uh, – when somebody orders a slice of pizza and they go, this really isn't supposed to work. And then they go, but this is really good. And I said, every one of the special pizzas come with what we call the slice replacement guarantee. If you try it and you don't like it, we'll give you something else in four years. I think we've replaced six slices. <laughs> That's crazy. So I, like I said earlier, I can't really eat it because of the, the gluten-free stuff, but I know what your special is every single week. Like I really do. I'm, I follow your page. I have since you guys opened up and I can literally tell you, you know, what was it? Tomato pie last week too. Oh yeah. That yeah. was, so that like, is, I follow it every week and it's always great to see too. Cause like I love WJ Dent. I live down in Piney point. And so I go to, you know, chiefs WJ Dent's all the time for stuffed ham. And I love to see it when you guys put it on the, on the pies there. So the way you're able to tie in all the local, businesses into the slice house too i think it's awesome like it's a it's a great great message you guys put out there 
Now, if you're ready for this, when we, uh, so when we've done it now with Dave for three years, love dance. Um, he, he has a great restaurant. So do you realize that we buy that week, 70 pounds of just stuffing that doesn't include the ham because we do the pork shoulder and the regular ham, just his stuffing. We buy 70 pounds for that week. That's crazy. <laughs> we went through, uh, the tomato basil pie, which everyone says should be on the menu all the time. I don't disagree with them, but we went through 10, I'm sorry, 12 10 pound pallets of tomatoes. We went through 120 pounds of tomato in four days. That's wild. Is there, has there been a, a special? Cause you just said you might put that one on the menu or thought about it, but has there been a special that has been so popular you have put on the menu or do you just keep it coming as a special? So we have no idea how we came up with it, but our first special, the first week, was the chicken cilantro that has literally been on the menu for all four years, every day for four years. And and if you ask us how we came up with that special, we have no idea. <laughs> That's the best. That's the way it happens. It's like when you're cooking in the kitchen and you make the best meal and you can't even remember what you actually, you know, what the recipe was or how you did that to, to recreate it. But it sounds like you guys got it dialed in, even though you don't know the origins of it. So that's some, that's wild stuff. If you're this passionate about it, I'm sure the people that, you know, your son and your wife are passionate about it and the people you're working with that are working at the restaurant with you are probably that passionate too. So it's, it's not just, you know, this is a pizza joint. This is fun for you. It seems like. It, you, it, it, I always joke. I always joke around with my wife, who is also our accountant. And I say, "Hey, it's not about making money. It's about making people happy." And I guess the byproduct of making people happy is making money. But uh, we, we really, we really, really do enjoy the fact that people enjoy us. And 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 let me and let me fast forward. You know, one of the things that um, we need more is bar space. And, and and I'm not saying that it's just a bunch of people coming in to drink, but people eat and drink at the bar. We have 12 bar stools right now. On Friday, you know, we open at 11 o'clock. The bar stools are full at 1045. So our regulars get there and they sit at the bar on Friday, especially on what's the what's the day off that the uh, US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that that that's the big Friday. And so uh, the cool thing about the new place is we are actually going to have 28 bar stools from 12, as well as a whole separate area that's just going to be the bar area. So the, the original, the slice house to go side, we're going to call the mild side and the bar side, we're going to call the wild side. There you go. <laughs> that's awesome. But see here, I have no doubt. It's like when they build bigger roads. Uh, to alleviate traffic, but then it just becomes more trafficy anyways. I have an <laughs> odd feeling it's going to be the same thing. Instead of just having the you know the twelve that show up every day at ten or every Friday at ten forty five, you're going to have twenty eight that show up at ten forty five on CWS Fridays now. And I think you're going to, I, I think you're going to have no problem uh, filling the restaurant with with clients and with you know friends and family because that's what it sounds like. Like I read through your Thanks. posts on Facebook. I know a few people that. Literally, I don't think we're friends with you before, but through the Slice House became your friends like Mantle Gray and people like that, that oh, yeah. literally are, are consider you family or friends because of the Slice House, which is crazy to me. You know, you're a restaurant, but like you said, if you're putting people first and you're putting people enjoyment first, everything else kind of falls into place. And, you know, it's it, it, it's so much fun because so many of our younger customers are having children, their first child. And, and it's hilarious to watch them grow in front of us, you know, the, the, in the four years. Um, and, and how cool is it that um, one of our great customers just had a baby boy? We got a text, you know, hey, the baby just got delivered. And uh, and by the way, we need a sub, you know, or we need a slice of pizza. And it really is. It, it's um, they are friends. And uh, and I think that that's the cool thing about Leonard Town. And, and, and I, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I think that a lot of the bars and restaurants in town have that relationships with their customers. You look at OTP. You know, which has, you know, what have they been open now? 12 years, maybe 13 years, you know, yeah. an unbelievable clientele that come for, you know, whether it be wing night or whether it be their specials that they run. And, uh, you know, our new one of our newer restaurants, Sweet Bay, which is just always full. And um, uh, the coffee house, Sean, uh, is moving into the uh, Duke building, which I got to tell you, we're all excited about because it's just going to bring more people downtown um, as much as the offerings have increased, 
our business has increased exponentially with even the additional competition. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say anything about the Rex Theater, which has just been an absolute home run, you know, for our business. I was joking around with Joe uh, at the Rex, and I said, the only one that benefits more from the Rex Theater than you is us, because of the fact <laughs> that his customers come in and and, and, and want to get a quick bite to eat before, uh, you know, they go over to one yeah. of the shows. And, and on our Saturday business has just been up you know, when he has a show, we're up 35% on a Saturday, which is unbelievable. And That's I think that wild. everybody else is sharing the same success. So I, so I, a little backstory on me. I, I've been down here now for 20 years. Yeah. Um, and I can remember first going to Leonardtown and we kind of talked about this before a little bit, but I can remember going to Leonardtown first. It wasn't like it is now. Um, it, it seems more alive's the wrong word, but kind of lively now there's more people down there there's more people that are um you know down there walking around going to the different restaurants or rex theater is it just because it's having its time or has there been like plans in place that have kind of been pushing this kind of development i i think i think that uh, dan uh, our mayor and lachelle have done you know an outstanding job um helping businesses and helping businesses grow and uh, and, and I, as you've seen these vacant buildings that are starting to fill up, you know, we lost the car dealership and obviously Maria Nash has gone in. And uh, and, and I don't know if you've heard uh, a flower that just yep. opened up a cup. I mean, they, they, they've opened up the lines out the door and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and then, of course, the Salted Scoop, which was over at um, uh, Jerry's SOF Market. And they moved to the square and then Needed uh, moved in there. So it's incredible to see, you know, and, and obviously 20 years ago from talking to customers, we've been down here for six. It's, it's an entirely different place. And we've got now the, the um, bank of America building that's uh, that's going to be uh, developed. Uh, we've got the uh, bank at the end of Washington street that, that, that they just put new windows in and stuff. It's incredible. It's incredible to think that that dealership could possibly have sat vacant. And instead there's three, thriving businesses soon to be more, including they're going to build that container city in the back. There's going to be 20 retail containers in the back uh, parking lot of where the dealership was wow. that, are going be, that are going to be leased out to people that um, that want to start a, a, a small business. Can you imagine how much fun that's going to be? And, that, and like, even in this, I, even in this kind of economy we have right now, where a lot of people are working remote, even as office space, if it's someone doing an office space, maybe doing a podcast, doing that kind of stuff too, or having people come in and yeah, I like that. That's really forward thinking of Leonardtown. And I think, you know, obviously your success is a lot due to what you guys have done, but it sounds like Leonardtown is definitely not getting in your way and, and definitely making sure that you have the tools to kind of move forward. It's so neat to see, like I was down there, three Saturdays ago. And I, yeah. you know, we normally go during the week or walk around during the day and stuff, but it was a Saturday and it was packed. It was the right. sidewalks were full. If you went into salted scoop, you were waiting, you know, 10 minutes to get ice cream and no one walked away. That was the crazy thing to me. No one walked away. No one said, I don't want to wait in this line. Every single person there stood in that line to get ice cream. And then every single person walked down to the wharf to go look at the water. Then every single person, you know, walked up and did that whole loop. It just is so nice to see that many people enjoying it because it's a beautiful area it it, it 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 really is and with with the um changes that they've made down at the wharf and the changes to come you know uh, you know obviously there's there's much bigger things that they have planned for the wharf that'll come with tudor hall coming in it's it's incredible i mean five years from now it's not gonna look anything like it looks now and and, and i think that that's exciting and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we have a downtown, we have a square. You can't say that in a lot of these smaller towns that you actually have a place where people can gather. Um, uh, you know, you've heard about the duck that's coming, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, the conversation around that is just insane, you know, that we're anticipating the town to be absolutely overrun because a, uh, a six story duck is coming to town, which is, are you going to do is, a duck duck special pizza? Is oh, there... we're doing a duck. Okay. We're doing duck special pizza. You don't have to give it away sure. now, but I was, I had some, I had some ideas in my head, but well, we're thinking, we're thinking Peking duck. 
Uh, yes. uh, Meg, Megan uh, just bought some confit duck that we're going to try, and I'm thinking duck a la, a la orange, so maybe duck two ways. <laughs> that is so awesome. Now I'm excited about the duck coming down there. I think it's going to bring a lot of attention, and like to even go out on the you know on a on a limb basically and be like, let's get this duck down here. That shows how willing Leonard Town is to do things to help bring more eyes to businesses that once people see what you guys are doing, whether it be the slice house, whether it be, you know, the Rex theater and stuff like that, they're going to want to be there more. I think that's what the real big thing is right now. We're in that discovery phase of Leonard town. And the more people that know about it in Southern Maryland beyond the more popular it's going to get. And I think you, the salted scoop, like all these places that are getting lines out the door are going to be reaping that, you know, that benefit. Well, and, you know, and, and I don't know, you know, we haven't done fireworks in years. I think they did fireworks a long time ago. You should see the budget. You should see the amount of money that has come in for uh, Jimmy Hayden's. Uh, Jimmy Hayden, I think, is heading up um, the uh, fireworks. And you should see the uh, the amount of money that's come in for, for these fireworks. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It, awesome. They're going to do it on um, well, Labor Day. Labor that's Day, awesome. which is a fun, fun time. And so that's going to be just a great time. It's going to be on a barge out at the wharf. And, you know, you can imagine how much fun that's going to be. So that just, you know, awesome. concerts and, you know, and all the things that are going on. So, yeah, great, great time to be in Leonardtown. That's for sure. It's like that synergy. It sounds like the the passion that people like, you know, the OTP and you have for Leonardtown has kind of just spurred more and more people to say, Hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to do this too. And it, I'm curious to see how much momentum is built and how far it goes. Like, I think we're in a, in a very fun stage of Leonardtown. I, 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 I totally agree with you. And, and we're, we're super excited about, you know, the, the startups that they're successful, um, uh, exhausted, but successful. <laughs> And, uh, you know, because it's funny, eh? we, we always joke around whenever we, we do a special, we, we can't do it in a small way. I mean, it's always, you know, a uh, big, big volume. And, uh, and I think that'll, that everyone else um, that's creative and does something different has that kind of um, success. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't mention our friends over at the front porch, you know, yep. who's been there forever and just yep. does an excellent job. And especially when the weather's beautiful and people are outside, you have a band the other day. I mean, it's, it, it's fun to see. It's fun yeah. to see. Well, Ken, I appreciate you coming on today. Um, where can people, and I know the answer to this, but I'll let you say it. Where can people find you, uh, find the Slice House on social media? What are the best places to It's Facebook. It, it, <laughs> it's, my, it's my posts. It's our posts uh, two, three times a week on Facebook. You can get all the information there. And then obviously stay tuned for our move. Uh, we are uh, we're probably looking at about 30 days. All the equipment's been ordered um, and uh, uh, build out is almost done. Uh, there wasn't a lot to do. It was a lot of just cosmetics and stuff like that, but uh, but it's almost done. So uh, so we're going to have a, you know, uh, obviously looking forward to a huge grand opening party and then and then stay tuned with uh, what's going to happen to the original Slice House because there's lots of people that want it and uh, oh, we're going to figure out what we're going to do with it. But, but that's going to be another great, uh, great place when we move out to the square that's awesome and so i'll put the uh, facebook link in the show notes for people too so if you're looking for his facebook page it is the slice house on facebook it's easy to find yeah correct and, 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 and both both locations share the one uh the one uh, account yep I, I gotta i gotta say you gotta even if you don't want to eat pizza or you don't even live in leonard town or are gonna visit leonard town follow his page because i always get a chuckle every time i see a controversial uh um special coming up especially this week's um what's a ham and pineapple Oh I yeah! Just, I went right to the comments. I had to see what everyone. Yeah, was you have to. Like you have to. You have to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have to read because you, you you certainly know who who wants it. And you certainly know who doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ken, thanks for coming on today. Um, and hopefully, I'll be seeing you in, in downtown Leonardtown soon. All right, Robin. Hopefully, we'll we'll be able in the new place to um to get to you something gluten free. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Maybe I'll bring my own crust in, and we can just put some uh bacon or some uh, ham and pineapple on there. You know, I can do that for you. <laughs> <laughs>